But no, the other fellow with the hurt feelings uh, is is our our best friend, the plumber, John Moxley, because apparently now there is footage of the plumber. Remember, he was in a some kind of and he even admitted it amateur jujitsu tournament up in the greater Cincinnati area. This was months back, and and the news came out. Well, he won, he won his division in this amateur jiu-jitsu tournament that took place near his home. Death jiu-jitsu. There you go. He's got the death jitsu, you know, no, don't give a fuck. And apparently, come to find out, that's what nobody gave about this tournament was a fuck because when we got clarification on the details of this big victory, there was one other guy in the division and Moxley won that match, so he won one fight or one match or whatever the, the term is that they're using professionally by beating this other amateur guy, and that's how he won the division. So, but still, people say, well, hey, he's out there doing it, right? And these are the same people now. It was CM Punk who fought in the UFC twice, who went through the training camps, who went and learned it, as Lance Russell would say. We went and learned it. And went through the training camps and actually fought and added buys to the program in the ultimate fighting championship. But Moxley's out there doing what he can do on the local level. And apparently now, there's footage out there of him going to the mat and in what was it? Brian, you saw it. I don't, I can't believe it took a minute of scuffling. Was that the whole thing? He was choked out by the figure four leg scissors of somebody that looked like he, you know, is a paint clerk at Home Depot. I'm sure he's plenty tough. Well, you know, because those paint cans are heavy. I understand that. Well, and all, all, the chem- all the chemicals all day, the, the methylanzolines and the methamphetamines that you inhale with the paint, he could, you know, that's, that, that's dangerous shit. Well, I think if you work in a place like that, you have plenty of time to train maybe. You probably have a good schedule and a pension and a union. I mean, it all sounds like it's working out yeah, for this guy. Lo- a lot of paint to huff. Yeah. So, how the was this the whole fight? Was that it? The, no, the no, clip, no. Or was he, that that was the last uh, like 35, 40 seconds of what I heard was a two hour and ninety minute grapple. No, come on. People are comparing it to Gotch and Hackenschmidt. Two hours and ninety minutes. It couldn't have been a a, a, a a second over two hours and seventy-five minutes. I'm gonna give John Moxley a tip. Train in private. That's I guess the issue. There's nothing to be ashamed of that he's trying to that he's learning this and he wants to learn this, that he wants to be better at this. But if you're on AEW TV being presented as Captain Badass, ah. the flag bearer of the Blackpool combat scene. And then you're getting choked out with the legs of some guy, like it's Legs Langevin or something. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, on, on TV, he's taking bigger people and top stars and stronger people and younger people, and he's choking them out, and he's eating their best shots and popping right up, and he's, he's making them beg for mercy and plead. And Kai's Ernie lad would say, and call for their mama. That's what he's doing on TV. And... In front of people, witnesses with cameras that have access to the internet, he's getting choked out by fucking part-time amateurs in fucking walk-on tournaments on a local yeah. level. What the fuck? Yeah, Punk was on the uh, UFC pay-per-view events, and he had a UFC jersey even made. Moxley was in the Cincinnati Armory <laughs> against whoever. And there's footage of it. I mean, that's the other thing. See, that's like I said, there's nothing wrong with him doing it. But if you're the promoter, if you're Tony Khan, do you want this kind of footage out there? This isn't a private training session or you, you know, rolling around with your friends. This is a tournament where tickets are sold, it appears. People are there. Anyone could be filming this. Oh, yeah. It, it, there was, there, it looked like a local spot show crowd of a couple hundred people in the high school gym stands or whatever. There are people there. This is not goddamn secret society fights. So injuries aside, which is a whole nother concern, you know, just like the Darby Allen discussion, that one of your guys is going to get hurt competing in a grappling tournament or a BJJ tournament or whatever it may be, for just the image 
for just the way it looks, for the optics, for all the reasons Bill Watts didn't want one of his guys losing a fight in public. This isn't public. This is on video. If you're a promoter, do you have a problem with this? In a variety of ways. Um, in a variety of levels. In the in the previous generations, where nobody would have had a video camera or any way to distribute it, if, if it was your you know middle card guys, you guys would enter bodybuilding contests. Remember in uh, well, you don't remember, you weren't born, but Rip Rogers and Randy Savage decided to enter a regional bodybuilding competition in, here in Eastern Kentucky when they were both with ICW, and trained really hard and got really cut up and did the thing. And I think Rip came in third and Savage came in fifth. And it wasn't, it wasn't viewed as they showed footage on television because it wasn't viewed as a, a loss. Like we didn't win the thing, but that here, our professional wrestlers placed this highly in another physical or athletic endeavor or sport or whatever right you can you can do those type of things where it's a little branch a little offshoot but um in a space if it's a major tournament right if it's some kind of major deal that remember when the, some of the wrestlers got on the was it cbs or abc world's strongest man competition patera was on there one year crusher blackwell was on there one year blah 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 Okay, that's uh, they're not saying that they're the strongest man in the world, but they're placing with people who, from a variety of sources, are. That's why they're having this competition, and they're doing well. They're on the short list. They're on the short list, right? But now that uh, you can't do anything in public on a local level, if you are a star and you are doing something that's so incredibly close not only to wrestling but to the wrestling that you actually do that it completely deflates and takes the piss out of your whole fucking gimmick right you can't you can't tell me that if who's your favorite action movie star action hero physical fighting fucking guy brian my favorite yes douglas fairbanks oh god damn it i'm tough from the sound era from the sound era Clark Gable. All right, fuck. I'll I'll do my own similes. Thank you very much. Whether you were I the like era, uh, Rudy Rudy Ray Moore. I like Rudy Ray Moore. Okay, but I don't even know who the fuck that is. Dolomite. So, oh, okay. All right. Dolomite sorry. is his name, and fucking up motherfuckers is his game. What I'm talking about is whether it's Bruce Lee or it was Chuck Norris in the days of martial arts were over, or. Sylvester Stallone for the Rocky movies or Apollo Creed or Schwarzenegger or whatever. For them to just have the teetotal shit kicked out of them by some waiter at Applebee's or some accountant that's in a fucking elementary basic Taekwondo 101 class and have footage of it broadcast around the world when they are on screen playing these invincible heroes or whatever the fuck would be somewhat embarrassing would you not agree i would so that's the the point is not that he giving him the old rah-rah because people are still as we said they're fucking ribbing and pissing all over punk for fighting in the ufc twice because he lost well, but guess what? He got there and did it, made a difference in the fucking gate and and fulfilled something at a high level. He didn't go and choke out some goddamn, you know, fucking soccer dad in Newport. And It makes you so, think about that meeting with Punk and Moxley. Remember we heard about the one where Moxley wanted to do Rocky Three? I kick your ass <laughs> in like two minutes and then you come back later. Like you wanted to do that. Here's Punk sitting there. He's been through training camps. He's probably thinking, this guy's acting like the biggest badass ever. Has he ever been in a real fight? Where someone, well, couldn't, where someone couldn't use their legs to choke you out. Well, I was about to say, he's, he's been in some real struggles. Some of his matches, it looked like it's a goddamn... Uh, you get your dentistry degree, pulling teeth, trying to get something out of him. It's a real struggle there, but only in a working sense. 
But nevertheless, so uh, uh, apparently this is a, a he got him, the, the guy got him with a figure four head scissors, right? He's, he's got his hands free and he just wrapped his legs around Moxley and Moxley see you, he can't get out from under him. He's got nowhere to go. And he's, I fucking tap done. It, it, I was about to fish hook his ass. What you said, this guy's making from Tony Khan. I'm sure in the millions of dollars, wouldn't everyone agree that he's got to be making seven figures a year? No one told oh, yeah. Khan. No, no, no. He's making several million a year. Yeah. Okay. Then in that case, hire your sparring partners and fucking do this in private where there are no cameras allowed and get to a level that people say, you know what? We could get you in a legitimate regional tournament and we believe that you have a reasonable chance of winning a match or two. And then go for it. But don't just show up a supposed celebrity playing the fucking death jitsu expert at this at Tony Khan's expense of a couple million bucks a year and get punked out by fucking unemployed lifeguards or whoever this fucking guy is. Death jitsu. I tapped out. There you go. And it's it's not that hard. He can afford. If you if if you want to do something like that in public, you have a responsibility to your employer, to your image, to your gimmick, to your opponents that have to sell for this shit. Either be real fucking good at it and do it in a way that they can promote on the actual wrestling show that you're paid to do, and it's not em- embarrassingly small time or unsuccessful, or yeah. don't do it out in public. Hey, O'Neill does Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You never hear, oh, Al Bundy got choked out at the Civic Center the other day. Well, and, and, and besides that, poor, you know, that would even be more acceptable than this because Al Bundy or even goddamn modern family fellow, can't call his name right now, it doesn't it, it project to millions of people. Well, not millions of people, but a number of 100,000 people every week on TV that he's Billy Badass and a combination of Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan with Johnny fucking, Badass. Well, there you go. Whichever badass. He's, he's it, 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 that's the thing. He's not that guy and he can't even get his public persona consistent when he presents shit to the public. I hope AEW doesn't trademark badass. When I go back, I'll have to be stank ass. You know, I'm surprised he's not joined up with the guy that ruled ass and ate ass. Oh, yeah. That, but that guy, you know, it's funny. There were some guys in the first year or so of AEW, some people they signed, some people that just showed up on TV, that if you criticize them, people would say, you don't know what you're talking about. This is what's big on the indies. That means it's the future of wrestling. <laughs> Give it a chance. This person's good. They're big on the indies. People there like them. That's just a small microcosm of society. A very dark, weird subculture of society, but nonetheless, they're big on the indies. Give them a chance. Have any of those people, I mean, we're five years later, you don't hear about any of them anymore. Are they still active? The war horses of the world? He was the, he, he was the one that ruled ass, He's right? He's the one that ruled ass. We've gotten more play out of you talking about that than we ever did about talking about him. But they had another one that sounded like he said one time that he ate ass. Oh, no, that guy's still there. That's one of the bear guys who became an Iron Savage who, last I saw, was asking another wrestler to go to Titty City, I believe. (laughs) (laughs) Is this an establishment that he he works at, is part owner of, or just, uh, you know, a, a crowd gatherer for? Titty City. But again, you know, again, going back to the Moxley thing, Moxley's supposed to be the biggest badass. That's the whole Blackpool Combat Club gimmick. The fact that him, Claudio, and Danielson are just three completely different types of badass who all worship Steve Regal. I don't know what exactly the gimmick is. But the video went around. Again, talking about what goes around on social media is different than what the average person going to a wrestling show is. But a lot of the times with AEW, you got to think a lot of those people know what's going around. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of those people might have what's going around. You just keep doing what you're doing? Or does this change the way you use John Moxley? Well, you're trying if to it's another, if, it, if it happens again, if another video pops up of him competing in some BJJ tournament and getting choked out quickly, what do you do? 
you're trying to put logic in an illogical man's mind with Tony Khan, I'm sure is, is nothing wrong whatsoever because it's all bullshit to them anyway. And that's the, the way they approach it. But if I was a, if I was either a legitimate wrestling promoter or a legitimate Hollywood fucking studio or producer or production company or whatever, I would go to my star and say, again, unless you can do this at an acceptable level in an acceptably widely viewed or, you know, high level environment, do it in private. Do not have your ass handed to you on local cable access or in front of people's camera phones again because you're damaging the the persona and the character and the aura that we are trying to build around you as our action movie star slash uh, pro wrestler slash fucking supposed tough guy fellow that it is the same thing as did who would have wanted to seen. Well, I, a lot of people may have wanted to see it, but how would it have affected Mr. T's career on the A-team if in the biggest season, which I believe was probably the first or second one, if he'd have had the boxing match at WrestleMania and just got the shit kicked out of him with no fucking response whatsoever in a shoot? What would that have done for him? Hey, we heard Dr. Death was the baddest guy on the planet for a decade. And look what a loss after tearing his hamstring or whatever it was did to his One reputation. loss. One loss. One loss. Fuck, yes. Which was why Ali's people all of a sudden got limber tail about the finish they had agreed on, which is why a lot of situations have turned sideways over years in boxing and wrestling and mixed martial arts and whatever the fuck. And this guy is just going out. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing this for real here. What I do on the show is a show, so everybody knows the difference. Should so, my, what voice is that? I don't, I don't, I can't sound like Moxley. You sound like Moxley. Hey, should they bring in the guy that choked him out? <laughs> no, because probably half the fucking roster they've already got could choke that guy out for real. <sighs> Well, we will see what happens, but again, there's nothing to be ashamed of pursuing athletic endeavors, and we congratulate John Moxley on his pursuit of grappling greatness. 